Hello and welcome to Playing Favorites. I'm Paul. And I'm Justin. Justin, hello. Hello. Exciting. We're gonna do something. We're really gonna do something really special today. You you probably are extremely excited about today's episode. I'm. I mean, I'm excited too, but you you more so than me, maybe just a tad. I'm very excited for this episode. Um, I think, and, and Kristen is actually, I think, more excited than either of us. <laughs> well, she actually she listened? Was, was she actually listened to this episode, do you think? She was going, if she wasn't herself already out and kind of not feeling well, she was, I was just going to pull her on. She was just going to oh. come on and answer the questions. Okay. She was, she was grilling me <laughs> while I was trying to finish the movie yesterday. And at, at one point I was like, woman, enough with these questions. Like, I'm trying to watch the movie. <laughs> All right, what are we doing? Like, I'm sorry. I'm grilling you. So what are we doing? Today, instead of, we're, we're doing a deep dive into a film that we're very familiar with, and in fact, a film series, we're going to talk about the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the Peter Jackson trilogy, starting with today, The Fellowship of the Ring. But instead of going through the plot like we've done before with these deep dives, uh, since most everybody has seen these movies, we've seen them so many times, instead, we've decided to focus on our favorite aspects of the movie. So... Things like our favorite characters, our favorite music, favorite weapons, even maybe perhaps our favorite orcs. Um, so <laughs> that's the design of this episode. That's our format. We are playing favorites, so it makes sense. Yes. We're going to play the game of favorites with one of our favorite movies. Sure. So this is like doubly favorite. Um, so to get, to get this uh, started, before we really dive in, I'll just say, if you're watching this on YouTube, look in the description below for all the ways you can connect with us. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification buttons. Leave us comments. Ask us questions. Mm -hmm. um, if you're on Twitter, you can see us uh, at, at PlayFavePodcast. Well, I'm going to interrupt you right there because I've been doing oh. little things on the side here. I, there's a link tree in our description now. So we're on oh, Instagram okay. now. We're on Thread. We're on mm -hmm. Inst Twitter. Because what mm. Twitter is called X now, I don't, I don't really know that whole thing. Oh God, no. Okay, we'll, we'll just <laughs> just put a link tree of links. Uh, we, Find I, us on the gram. We gotta start posting on those other sites though. I just, I just set it up. But yeah, so we'll, we're there now. But really, the best place to reach us is probably just in a comment on the YouTube channel. Obviously, if you mm -hmm. listen to just the podcast version, you could, you could find us, you know, on those other platforms if you just want to say hi, you know. But yeah. tell us yeah. your favorite orc. What was that? What was your favorite orc? <laughs> um. But yeah, normally what we do here, just to kind of, you know, if you haven't been here before, is we generally pick a topic and do uh, our favorites. We usually have honorable mentions and so forth. But for something like this, we thought we'd kind of mix up, spice it up a little bit just to make it a little more interesting and still be talking about favorites. Just a lot of them. Yes, exactly. Because we really love this movie. There's really like uh, so many things that we can pick apart. And that's exactly what we did. So without further ado, I'm going to give you an easy one to start up. Okay, I know we're going to talk about favorite character, but I want to I want to really get inside how Justin thinks about this movie. All right. Well, before Are you ready we, for I, that? what I will say, I'm ready. I'm ready for your question, but I will say, as we're rewatching all of Lord of the Rings, because eventually I think we're going to do The Hobbit, and then the show again. I know. Okay. Yes, the show. When you said The Hobbit, my heart fell. <laughs> We are going but, to the we're going to the Hobbit. Too. I know, I know. Yes, but out of all the Lord of the Rings media, if you would, this is my favorite of movie, the movies of, of everything. Really, I mean, this has always been. I mean, maybe maybe that changed. I've watched it a few times, but really, I love Fellowship. I'll just say that right off the bat. I love it okay. so much. It is it is it is like a nice warm bath, right? Full of just like comforting things to watch. I wouldn't even say nostalgia. I mean, it's just so beautiful. And my and my question to you is about really the opening of the movie in the shire um who is your favorite hobbit at bilbo's party okay just the party the, just at the party oh, you can, I you can a throw in the sackville baggins is if you like but i really wanted to, my initial th reaction is the guy that's like gardening as gandalf comes in with the grumpy face and then he smiles oh. <laughs> the whole shire is there so you can just say your favorite hobbit in the shire i don't know why i said the at the party but <laughs> <laughs> just your favorite shot. I love because that guy because he looks so grumpy, and then he's just yes, so happy. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's yes. like... <laughs> sees the fireworks, yeah, but then so his cool. wife mm -hmm, prompts um, him. Yeah, that's that's the one that initially <laughs> jumps at me. Is that is that particular Hobbit? I mean, do, do I mean? Yeah, I don't know. What's your what's your answer then? What's your favorite Hobbit? Mine is if you if you 
if you've only seen the standard version, you you will not have seen this Hobbit. Yep. Mine is from the extended edition is when Bilbo is describing Hobbits. It's the one that's like oh digging yeah. in his ear as he's saying Hobbits aren't generally too bright or <laughs> too, you know, ingenuous, like whatever he's saying. And he's like, Yeah. Like I, didn't, I, I didn't realize that was extended edition I that, shot. I didn't know that, but okay. Interesting. All right. I remember him right. though. You don't like some proud feet? You don't like proud, that guy? <laughs> <laughs> proud foot, proud feet. Yeah, that's good stuff. All right. For but let's not beat one. around the bush anymore. Mm-hmm. Speaking of different people in this film, who is your favorite character? Well, that Hobbit was my favorite character. No, I'm kidding. Well, I'm uh, sorry to spoil <laughs> Uh, well, my favorite character, and I thought about this too, because obviously there's somebody to pick from, and it's so mm-hmm. hard. But then I I look at like the the point, like the the overall theme of fellowship, right? And then the way the way the movie presented it, and I, I immediately would say Boromir. I mean, Boromir has got to be my favorite favorite character throughout throughout this film. Uh, he this is like his movie, really. I mean, you get mm-hmm. the rest of them throughout throughout the rest of the the series, but he. Sean Bean just really kind of sold that character to me. I think it's one of the the better representations of the characters in the books too. So, yes. and plus, just he has so many good like kind of some comedic one liners for such a serious character though. Like they're just so quotable. Why? So but, like, snarky too. You yeah. know, so snarky, full of sass here and um, there. But like his his whole just, acting in that yeah. last moment, like where he's like trying to take the ring, going from like anger to to sadness to regret to like not realizing what he did like it's right. all it's all really well done i really enjoy everything like they did with boromir i guess and of course sean bean's uh representation of it and you need something like that to show the audience for the coming films just how serious the power of the ring is yes right you can tell them about Gollum. you can tell them it has a will of its own but until you see that transformation of like the son of gondor be- you know, this noble, you know, son of the steward, you know, next in line to to rule Gondor, you know, carrying wood and just like, you know, losing his his uh, composure to just grab Frodo is like, it should be mine. Give it to me. Like, if you just lend me yeah. it, yeah. that that it's huge because, you know, you, you start from like the highest of highs and then you go to the lowest of lows. He's a great character. He was one of my top running for this question too uh, as you probably guessed from my <laughs> but it's crazy how much you like kind of dislike him throughout the movie and you don't yeah. really hate you don't never really hate him you don't him. trust, him. Just, you don't you trust him and then yeah. you realize okay i was right you shouldn't trust this guy but then like just that quick turn of redemption he gets by saving uh mm-hmm. mary and pippin really kind of sell like that overall character be like you just like you kind of feel bad for him you kind of wish he didn't die like and yep. like that whole confrontation, like with with Aragon, all that stuff, like my captain, my king, like that. I love that. That's like it's like it really is like it's hard because I know we're gonna do favorite moment eventually here, but like that one is <laughs> kind of up there. But I I I, I like Boromir as a character, kind of like obviously <laughs> it's gonna help my favorite moment decision, but it's still uh, Boromir absolutely is my uh, favorite character from this film. I I agree, and I and I that that part you're talking about too when when Aragorn finds him and he, he, I, I love it. Cause he's after what happens with Frodo, he defends Mary and Pippin. And then he admits it to Aragorn. It's the first thing he says. He's like, I'm sorry. I was weak. I didn't see. Now I see like, like, and, and Aragorn kind of puts him at peace. He's like, you've retained your honor. And the ring is beyond either of our, you know, grasp now. So like, and he does get a Viking funeral in the end, you know, sort of like yeah. in the boat, you know, with all his stuff and out to the out to sea. Uh, yeah, Bormir's awesome. What's uh, your favorite? It's Gandalf, man. It's Gandalf. Uh, I, it, I it, like pre pre godly, you know, Gandalf the White when he's still rough and tumble. Get gets his hands dirty, Gandalf. Smoking you know? some smoking some uh, good old Shire. What are they called? The, the vessel weed. weed. Pipe weed, weed or <laughs> making boats, uh, long Dinges. bottom leaf, long bottom leaf. That's um, right. Yeah, uh, I love I love Gandalf in this. I love his reconnection with Bilbo, and the fight that him and Bilbo have. Like, and 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 I love that this movie is really 
it, the the action of it is pushed forward because Gandalf goes to Gondor to do some research. You know, he he and it we get to see Minas Tirith for the first time, just kind of you know a little bit, but we get to see him go and kind of like put the pieces together. Gollum has been holding the Ring of Power this whole time, and um, his confrontation with Saruman. This this movie, in a sense, is like a battle between them two, right? Between yeah. it, it's almost like they're narrating against each other because Gandalf is is talking to the Fellowship. And then meanwhile, in the background, a lot of times you'll hear Saruman saying like, so what will you do, Gandalf? Will you take yeah. them below the mountain? What if the mountain defeats you? You yeah. know, this kind of the, the, this wizard. Like, who's, um, he, who's like Sarah? I did jump, jump, jump in there. But like, who is Sauron talking to? It's like he goes to the mind. Saruman. Yes. Saruman. Oh, Sa- Saruman. Sorry. Saruman. Sorry. He's like, he's like, what will you do? Like, when he says, what will you do, Gandalf? He's like. And he's like he's like opening books and like who's in the room with him when he's saying this stuff? It's like it's like he's like nobody, nobody. You, you won't just... da- you won't dare go through the mines of Moria. They died. The dwarves dig dug too deep. Like <laughs> <laughs> he's talking to us, obviously. He's talking to that random goblin that follows him around. That's what he's. <laughs> oh yeah, I love I love the dude. I love when they just show up too when they just walk in and they're like. <laughs> What is the I command? And he's like, all right, let's get to work. Uh, Saruman is actually a really close second for me in this, just because you you immediately get the feeling that there's something wrong as soon as you see him. As soon as you see him and you're introduced to him. Isengard itself is an imposing structure. And then, mm. I mean, it's Christopher Lee. So yeah. even if you know, have no idea, just his overall demeanor, even yeah. though he's in white, you can kind of like <laughs> see through it like, Something I don't know about this guy. Something again, I don't trust. I'm laughing again because when you first see him, it's like he's like talking to Gandalf, but from like the top of the stairs. Yes. <laughs> and, and it's like he's like, what? Like, what would you do to come here? And it's like Gandalf is like a mile away. It's, it's like, but you know, they do keep mentioning, you know, in the books and and in the movie, they do mention it in the deleted scenes in the next one. Saruman's voice, you know, oh, maybe yeah, he projects the really he projects well. Really good, yeah. He can talk to you, you know. It's based on line of sight. If he, he can to, see you, he, you can hear him. He went to that uh, PR coaching skill school in, of, of Isengard. Um, <laughs> but anyway, All right. Gandalf, though. Not, not, we're here to talk about Gandalf. What other things about Gandalf do you love? Oh, you know how serious he is in the beginning. And the, like, how he just cracks in humor. He's, he's so good-natured and loves being in the Shire. Like, you could tell... And then, like, the kids are running, and they're all disappointed, and then he lets off some fireworks, you know? He, he's having just as much fun as anybody at the party, too, mm-hmm. like, setting off fireworks. And then, of course, he's, like, the disciplinarian. Yeah. Um, sets Sam on his way, too, and, says, and, like, gives him the command, like, don't you leave. He's Mr. so Frodo mean to Sam for some reason. I don't know why. He, like he, he's he, mean to everybody. He mean to everyone except for the the Baggins. I, I mean, like, really, like he's so nice to them, but he like he like hates everyone else. <laughs> well, well, I mean, look at the looks he gets when he walks in. It's like you're, and Frodo says like uh, wizards are no good. You know, everyone thinks you're a troublemaker. Um, so he's got a reputation there, but. I love I love Gandalf. I love Ian McKellen's portrayal yeah. of Gandalf. I don't he think anybody some, else could have done it. He better. has like really good like facial expression acting, mm-hmm. right? It's never always about uh the the dialogue given, though he has some great quotes and one-liners and you know, obviously there's so many iconic moments with Gandalf, especially specifically in this movie. Um but yeah, he just the way he looks and glares and like it's just and obviously the camera work helps was helps with that. Sure. But like his look obviously has is like is perfect. Like it's I, not there's just some like, there's some like just it, shots of Gandalf walking around with the hat and the cloak and stuff. It just they look so like I mean I'm sitting there like watching this twenty year old movie. Twenty years old, right? I mean it's it just looks so perfect. Like I can't sit here and complain about anything. It's like like everything looks right. I mean, yeah, there's some weird CGI effects and you could kind of maybe nitpick a few things, but like mostly it's a very well-made movie and Gandalf, like his portrayal is like adds to that with the whole, like, you know, how it's well not... they do the, 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 him being tall with the hobbits and stuff. Sorry. Didn't mean to keep cutting Sure. Up. No, no, no. It's not necessarily always what he says, but how he says it. Yeah. You know, and, and like when Bilbo is accusing him of taking the ring from him, 
and he, you know, raises it like Bilbo Baggins, you know, and shot. darkens the room and everything. Mm-hmm. And then he quiets down. It, it, it like he uses his powers. He never like Saruman, you could say, used his powers to benefit himself, but Gandalf rarely uses his power to do anything but protect people or to try to do some good, you know, to right some wrong. So, okay. All right. Very good. Very good answers to this first round of question. <laughs> uh, one question so far. Uh, but I want to ask, um, since we get to see a lot of different types of fights in this movie, but which one to you like stuck out? I wouldn't say like battles yet. Cause this movie doesn't, we have skirmishes. Yeah. We don't have battles yet. We have a, like a, the biggest group of people we have are troops of, um, I mean, without the, without the flashback, I mean, you can, we can certainly talk about that, but you know, battles between our fellowship, uh, or the hobbits themselves. I'll let you so go who, first. Who, you go first on this one because okay. I mean, I, I just did a favor. I want to make sure you get a chance. I don't want to be the, always the one to pick. Well, I love the last Alliance. I think that's a great. Uh, sequence. I love watching that prologue in the very beginning and seeing, yes. you know, the last lines of Men and Elves. But for for the movie itself, like the real action of this movie, it's the fight at Balin's tomb in Moria, where dwar- where yeah. Gimli's on his cousin's tomb, saying, "There's still one dwarf in Moria that draws breath." You know, I love that with the cave troll, the whole thing, the revealing of the Mithril at the end. You know, Me- Frodo getting skewered like a boar. All of that is great. You get to see some of the Legolas crazy action, mm-hmm. but it's it's nothing too uh, insane. And and what I like is that you get to see all of the characters really let loose for the first time, and it's the Hobbit's first real confrontation with orcs, because yeah, and true. they really they they use that camera work to show their reaction to like those first orcs that come through with like blood streaming down their face and like. Mm-hmm crazy eyes and then they pan right over or or they cut right over to Mary and Pippin and and Sam and Frodo like all huddled together like holy crap and Gandalf charges and they stay with Gandalf and they charge in too and even Sam uses his cast iron pan those things are heavy they can really do some damage you know before I owned one of those I was like it was like eh, it was a pan, but I'm like cast iron oh yeah that, that would hurt there is a really cool shot in that scene too because this honestly when you when you ask, is probably I was about to answer the same thing to be honest, but I have a backup, oh, really? so it's all good. I mean, it's the such a good. Morning, the, yeah. the, 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 the whole thing's awesome. I mean, like, you can't really. It's like the first really intense thing. I mean, you have the the battle with the um, the Night Riders um, or the um, no, the Nine. Uh, yes, you know that's kind of a neat fight, you know. But the, obviously, the Hobbits aren't really as involved. I feel no. like I feel like it to to a degree. Aragon kind of was overpowered in that fight a little bit but <laughs> yeah, because he had a torch justin you're yes. forgetting that i did had a torch. shot with with the knife yeah, looking like, at that ah! now i'm like that was the guy that that was like the leader of mordor's armies but yes <laughs> a lot of those good sequences <laughs> um but anyway, anyway, the torch yeah perfectly <laughs> but no i love seeing the hobbits like draw their swords for the first time in that mm-hmm. in that moria fight um, it's really neat, like just seeing, and then I'll, and like just like I, I one thing I did notice, I don't think I've ever like like this re, this recent rewatch, like I you know obviously you new, learn new things, and how I guess brave Perrin is, um, there's a Perrin, Pippin? no Pippin, sorry, why, why I say Perrin, I'm thinking freaking wheel, of wrong Pippin. mefo, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how uh, Pippin like he like literally jumps on the troll and like hangs on and like starts stabbing it like crazy. I'm like, go Pippin, yeah. like seriously, like like I was like, I mean, because like I think uh, Mary falls. Save Frodo, and they have it. Shows like his, their intense like passion in this journey. Like he, they just didn't come just for granted. Pippin didn't know what they're how the heck they're going, but like, yeah. uh, I just thought that was kind of neat. I didn't really notice because there is a lot that happens in that in that fight that you can't you can miss really easily. Uh, it's crazy That's... how that battle is represented in like three pages in the book, but like, <laughs> of course, but, you know, it's like a, it's it's a set piece. You know, like let's show how Gimli fights, how Boromir fights. Like, like it's all, like, different classes of characters, you know, if you're playing an RPG or something. Yeah. It's like, oh, now you're going to see whole who's your character, right? So, um, what I... 
you were saying about the what's it um about like the hobbits fighting uh their bravery to actually fight yes and then you get legolas like using his brain you know to kill the cave troll uh, but for the most part when frodo gets stabbed that's my favorite death scene in this movie <laughs> so it's much... not even his death but they keep going back to it over and over because they show like every character's yeah, reaction it's a lot of slow-mo a lot of like, slow-mo oh. <laughs> yeah they do show oh. a lot like over and over and over and <laughs> but it, it it was like it's a good thing that it did happen because it inspired them it gave them fury and they fought with passion mm-hmm Mm-hmm. So, Borman right. has a nice has a nice one liner in that beginning of that fight. It's like <laughs> they brought a trave game troll. <laughs> I love I love how, but no, but I love that though. Like as far as like a movie thing, it's like the cave troll doesn't come in. It's like what's the cave troll? What is that? Like what's that? What's that yeah. look like? And you don't see it. Like I love how they handle the the whole beginning of that fight where you have the drums coming and like the lights coming up up to the cave. It like yeah. gives this sense of suspense. And then you get the whole like just preparation ready to fight, which is kind of neat where he like gets on the, on the top of the, what the, the grave or the tomb or whatever. Um, yeah. and it's like you said, the Gimli said that line, but yeah, the whole, the whole sequence is great. Um, it's so hard to not pick that one as my, as a favorite fight, but I will pick a different one. I'll pick a different one. Uh, All right. So what are you going to pick? Uh, well, I already <laughs> talked about part of it. Like, I mean, the fight with Boromir, like with the with the with the uh, saving um, Mary and Pippin. Aragon. But honestly, it's yeah. a- Aragon's fight to to save Boromir. That's freaking awesome. To be quite honest, like I love the. It's so quick, yes. but like, like there's just some really like, cool, cool shot when he comes down. There's a first. There's a shot where he's blowing the horn, and there's the shot where the camera work just kind of follows the orcs down the hill. Mm-hmm. And it's one shot. It's awesome. It's like so oh, well done. And Aragon gets there obviously as Merry and Pippin are already stolen away, and it's such a that orc. I'm sure we'll talk about more, but or you yeah. Ur- Urukai, not necessarily orc. Yeah, Urukai, the Urukai leader. Um, but like he like that fight is so fast and furious. Um. Without without any need for family, because we don't need any family in this movie. Mia uh, familia. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, like there's a shot with that fight where it's like he like Aragon gets like hit hard. He's like bloody, but like he has that one thing where like the shield like goes like around his neck and he's like up yeah. against the wall and it's just like there's a lot of like violent stuff and and then like just of course the end of the fight where he just grabs the sword and just shoves it into himself and then he like cuts his head off <laughs> and i'm just like it, there's not there's not as much to talk about with that fight as the moria one but it's definitely i mean obviously it's the last one of the movie but uh, i i love how fast and fe- like intense that fight is it's it's really really good it doesn't make the urukai seem all that bad because aragorn just like dispatches a bunch of them when he tells Frodo to leave. Yeah. He's like, run. And there's like, you know, a whole mm-hmm. battalion of them coming up the slope. And he's like, okay, let me do my sword salute. Okay. Yeah. Aragon, <laughs> like, he's, yeah, he's a ranger. He's been doing it for decades, fighting yeah. bands of orcs, you know, so it's not like out of his character. Uh, that, if that you were just like, that. if you, this is the first time you're watching the movie, if you didn't know anything about, the character then yeah you'd be like wow he's he's kind of overpowered but he really is as skillful as that like he is the the one of the greatest warriors of his time um and speaking of warriors i think we got time for one more here before we take a little break but i wanted to ask you okay. and i want you to start i want you to tell me who is your favorite enemy in this movie that could be somebody that actually fought. It could be somebody you only, I mean, it could be, you know, the bodiless, faceless Sauron, just the eyes. It's a sack full but of baggins. Your, well, of course, they steal the silverware. <laughs> I mean, come on. Um, uh, yeah, who's your favorite enemy? The Belrog. Okay, me too. But yeah, <laughs> I, have a, I have a second one. Yeah, I the Bel- wait, I mean, we can share that. But on the Belrog, I mean, the thing is, like the Belrog, like you don't really get much out of the Belrog in this one. But like he is freaking awesome looking. I mean, come on, he is. he's awesome I mean, looking. The way that it's described in the book, it, like you know, this immense creature of shadow and flame. It's got wings. It's got a whip and a sword. It's like holy crap! It reminds me of if I'm just thinking about the book description. Reminds me of that uh, uh, hero quest. Uh, the gargoyle. 
from the original hero. Well, hero the gargoyle class. has a whip and like, yeah, 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 he has like that, all that, that stuff. Much. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that because I think it had wings too. Yep. The, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, in, in the game you would attach the wings. It was a separate piece. So you would don't. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It, but it, like seeing the introduction of the Balrog, like you see the first uh, Saruman, who is like my second favorite villain in this movie. Sure. Um, when he opens his picture book and he sees the, you know, like the picture of of like what the Balrog is, and like to think that in the first age, like for Morgoth, his armies, like these were the generals of his armies. Like, oh, see, I didn't know that. Where Balrogs were just like a, a fleet of Balrog. It's just like unbelievable to think of and to think how like just one was this immense and terrible the uh just absolutely scary the music is awesome for the balrog scene oh god the how chanting just, like, the they, chanting they come around the corner and all like everything is on fire yeah and he just shows up oh it's so good so okay. good can't believe he thought he could he could walk on that bridge though you know well it's like the balrog doesn't seem like a dumb orc so much he has like some kind of intelligence but yeah. he's like proud it's almost maybe arrogant yeah he's like i could do this yeah arrogant. sure yeah mm -hmm. he had the high ground he thought he could do it mm -hmm. um <laughs> yeah. gandalf but, uh, was relying on that arrogance um but yeah that, I, I mean if because we'll see more of the belrog in the next movie like i i i would still even without those moments like that's definitely the most like crazy thing because like, like i said the Urukai. Like, there's just a lot of them, you know, and it's not really, you can't really pick it. Like, the nine are really, honestly, I'll give them as my second, my second, like, I guess my oh, honorable right. mention. Because, yeah. I I mean, what, me watching it, though, it's like the nine are just done so well. Like, just the, how they're kind of made creepy and, like, their visuals are really neat. And, like, just, like, the way they, the, I guess, the, even, like, just, like, the oh, way they're, the, the gauntlets of sounds they make when they touch things. And, like, granted, like. <laughs> when, he, when he touched the ground and then. He called to the ring when he was over the hobbits. When yeah, and the insects the come out and All stuff. The nasty millipedes yeah. and insects start crawling out. It's like nice touches like that, you yeah. know. I uh, I love the nine. The nine, I definitely are up there. I just think they they get overshadowed a little bit because they're they're kind of not involved halfway through the movie. Um, sure, sure. But they are really kind of they're terrifying in the beginning, and it just Aragorn is awesome, and they just. <laughs> Gets rid of them yeah, all. Seriously, they would not have made it without Aragorn. Like they don't sleep, they don't eat, they just pursue. I love that slow motion when they're entering the inn. You know, like one after the other. In oh, the that's, the yeah, that's really cool. The when I first saw that, I was confused. I was like, I was actually really like uh, surprised by that when I first saw it because yeah, I didn't. I yeah. didn't. It was a good little. Yeah, it was good. Like, oh, reveal and like the what they look like in in like what I don't even know what you call that the shadow realm. When he puts the ring on. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. They look like yep. aliens. Like, it's really neat. Like, oh, yeah. They're, they're almost animal like. Yeah. 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 It's, I really like the nine. They're, they're, they're I good. Do, I do have to give credit to Saruman. I do love a lot of his scenes. Yeah. Yeah. He does kind of like narrate this conversation <laughs> with Gandalf. But I love when they're on Karadras, so they're trying to climb the mountain, mm -hmm. and Legolas is like, "There's an there's an ill voice on the wind." And he's like, "It's Saruman," and you get this awesome shot of Christopher Lee on <laughs> yes. top of Isengard, just going, "Oh, so blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I'm like, "Wizard fight!" Like, yeah. and they're, you just see all the storm clouds heading that sure. way. Sure, such a beautiful he, shot. He does such have a, a cool... he does have a great line, uh, and he has a lot of great lines, obviously. But like, what's the one he's like? I can't remember. You might, you probably remember more than I, but the, the one is like where he goes, eat man flesh. <laughs> yes. You will not eat. You will not sleep. You know, no fear. You will taste men flesh. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone cheers. Yay. So good. So good. All right. All right. Let's, let's take a quick break. We've got some more questions for you, Justin. When we come back, we'll, we'll try to get to the end and then we'll talk about maybe our favorite overall moment of the movie. And we're back. All right, Justin. I've got another little light question to ask you. Just to, I mean, I, I know it's it's been just a short break, but in case you need a refresher, 
I want to ask you, there are a lot of orcs and Urukai in this movie, and I'm going to lump them all together. I'm going to ask you, who's your favorite one oh, in boy. the movie? This is a quick one. So you asked me that we, we we talk about these questions before the show, and I'm like, oh my god, what is it? what is? That? I don't. There's no names for these orcs, really. I mean, there's... <laughs> you just have to describe them. All right. So there's an orc when they're in the mines of Moria when they're running through like the columns, yeah, and like all of a sudden they're surrounded, and there's just like one orc that just has this one facial expression. Rah! Like, yes, like... I know exactly the one you're talking about. <laughs> kind of like got the big, almost cat-like eyes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that that one, that one always sticks out to me like the most. I mm -hmm. guess is that one. Um, I I just whenever I'm like excited to see it. Like every single time I watch this movie, I'm just like I can't wait to see that. <laughs> I can't wait to see this one little orc that just doesn't really do anything except for make a really awesome special effect. Like like the makeup mm -hmm. is just so good with these with this with these orcs. To be quite I honest, I know they look so real and the way that they move. Everything I love in that scene too, where they're like crawling like ants out of the roof of Moria. So weird, yeah. So it's just like unsettling and cool. Uh, mine is from the very beginning with the last alliance, and let me see if you remember him. He's like the maybe the second orc on screen in the whole film. Oh wow, it's, I don't remember. It's, it's as they're showing the 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 battle that's about to happen. It's the one that's got a bunch of like nose piercings. Oh, it's I got can't... like a column of nose piercings. It's I, like I, da, 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 I like don't know why. Almost. It's it's not it's not. Like, I can't remember oh, it. I have to see it now. I have to see it now. That's, that's oh, it. I'll try. Um, you're gonna have to go back and look. I'll have to look at he it again. The second orc on screen. Okay. Okay. But I love that guy because I, I love his piercings. I think it's really cool. I, it's something that you'll notice throughout this because right? they'll probably bring up more favorite orcs. But like how how much diversity. It's almost like the orcs have more diversity than the rest of the, the characters in the, the movie. It's like, you know what I mean? You don't really get any black people in this movie. I mean, like, <laughs> it's like. Uh, but I mean, you, you mean in terms of like there's goblins and orcs or. Well, they different colored orcs. I mean, you got some pale orcs. You got some really dark skin orcs. I mean, like, sure. there's a lot more variety there, I, I guess. I, I suppose in this movie. Yes, because there's only white blonde mostly elves in this or very fair haired <laughs> long haired elves that's what i liked about powers uh ring, rings of power they never seem uh, good seeing a little bit more of the different kinds of people there can be but okay All i right. actually have a i have a quick shout out one for you that we didn't put in the list i think you might oh. appreciate this one oh please uh I, I thought about this uh what is your favorite cheesy effect Cheesy special effect because there are a few yeah. in this yeah, movie, like, like practical ish. Effects. Whatever you want to call, it. like whether it's a weird lens mm -hmm. flare or transition or mm -hmm. or what have you, like because it is a, this movie is twenty years old. Granted, it looks amazing, but there's just a Still. few there's a few scenes that are just like a little bit cheesy, and I think it's only in this movie that you see most you see it. You don't really see them too much in the really later shows. ones. Yeah, um, you know, watching it this time. The uh, as a as as Kristen calls him the creep from the deep, the monster outside of the pool of Moria. Oh, like, the, the kraken. The, 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 yeah, the tentacle monster. Uh, he looks okay. It's just funny watching them play <laughs> around with the with the tentacles, you know. <laughs> yep. And then when when they open up, you know, you have the forgiving nature of darkness. That's the one thing. To yeah. Kind of hide. Yeah. You know exactly what this thing looks like. <laughs> so the only thing that really sticks out it's like the tentacles i always love the like aragorn takes a few steps and then slices a tentacle next to him you know it's just like everybody's cutting tentacles so mine i think i'm gonna make you laugh so there's it's when 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 they finally get to uh rivendell right so like they have this little transition because he's being healed Right, and there's this like white light everywhere, and he's like yep. floating in space, and like mm -hmm. the, he, he, all of a sudden you see Elrond's face like making like chanting oh, sound. Oh, 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 oh. It's a yeah, it's, it's it's a bunch of just right random there. random things happening in a white background. It just looks so like it looks like so eighties, like almost like an eighties <laughs> music video. Like it's yeah. really really hilarious to me. I don't know why. Like someone's home video almost. Yeah. Like here, I can bring in. <laughs> Some effects. Oh, look at this! It was Uncle Chris. He was at yeah, the party. It's like grandma. It's like grandma figured out how to use iMovie and like just made a bunch of just 
things. All my <laughs> grandchildren are coming. <laughs> that that, that that's... Elrond face is so like weird too, because it's the first time you see Elrond yep. in the movie proper, not and, in the battle. And of course, and he's just like blah, 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 like. And us, like you know, being from the time when this came out, obviously, you know, all I see is Agent Smith. Like it's just like it's so hard not to see it. Like it's like oh. the the actor does great, you know. Like it's not he doesn't do anything wrong. It's just it's so hard to like put that character into an elf body. It's like it's very hard. The movies weren't that all that far apart either. No, and I didn't know who Hugo we- Weaving was before I saw The Matrix. So I've seen him in exactly one other movie before seeing him be Elrond of Rivendell. Yeah. And that was Mr. Smith. So, of course, everybody, after we watched that movie, was like, Brodo, you're going to be fine, Mr. Smith. Like, <laughs> just like, <laughs> you carry a heavy burden, Mr. Smith. Um, but, okay. All right. Very nice. Yes. <laughs> Reminiscing about... I do have a shout-out. It's uh, it's the, the shot, the scene where she... Uh, where Galadriel is trying to being tempted by the the ring, like the she just oh. turns like green and stuff. Like it's just weird. <laughs> but anyways, I just it is a little weird, but it's not yeah. bad. It's not as bad as some of the other ones. But I'm just saying, like, yeah, there's some cheesy cheesy effects in this. But again. I feel like that effect is worse in the Hobbit movies in the third Hobbit. Movie oh, movie I don't even remember. I, we'll have to get we'll get to that eventually, I guess. When she goes into Super Saiyan mode, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, I'm going to ask you, I want to kind of take a little sidestep from the kinds of questions we have. And I want to actually talk about, because one of the things that makes this movie series so unique and so visually appealing is that it was all filmed in New Zealand in yes. these picturesque locations. So my, my question to you is, what was your favorite location, your favorite setting? Even if you only saw it for a few minutes, like where was your favorite place, like visually? Um, as you, you know, it's hard because you, there's like there's something I like about all of them, really. Um, but I say, I so I know we talk about the Mines of Moria a lot. I really like the Mines of Moria uh, quite a bit. But I will say, like one part of the Mines of Moria is the part where they're on the staircases. That whole like scene where where they're running from the Balrog. It's just the way yep. it's lit. Is just oh. that whole thing is really cool. And you got the orc, the, the I think they're orcs or goblins or whoever is yeah. shooting the bow and arrow. Like that, it's just like it's so like it's like showing them running down the staircase, like that. That whole I mean, all of Mines of Moria is, is wonderful. Like just the column room, which honestly, like I think about it, it's like, why do they make so many columns and they're dwarves? Like, why is it so support? Tall? support. I support. mean, it's but it's beautiful too. It was also supposed to be like a wonder of the world, you know? Okay, sure. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I love everything about that whole sequence of Binds of Moria, like everything is just well put together. Um, I mean, all of them are great. I mean, like you could say, like, we're, like they're all really pretty, like it's from the other locations, but sure, Minds sure. of Moria is up there for me. Sure. Uh, one of my favorite, just like we pass by it, but we don't stop is right behind you. It's the <laughs> Narganoff. I mean, yeah, I good. love, the, I love that whole sequence. It's short, but sweet. And it's one of those things where, if it wasn't in the movie, you would miss it. It buries you in this world even more. It grounds you there, makes you feel like um, you know what it's like to be in that in that place on that boat. But the actual like location uh, that I like the most in this movie is Lothlorien. is the is the realm of Galadriel. Okay, um, it's just I love how like dreamlike it is. How like there's very little like built. A lot of it is like them just like walking barefoot in grass, you know, or walking up in trees. It's very <laughs> Endor ish, you know, if I mm-hmm. could borrow a term. <laughs> Endor ish. Um, <laughs> and that like leaves are always falling in the music during that sequence is really beautiful too. And yeah, it, and, and because it's Galadriel's domain and the swan boats and all of that, it's just, it's beautiful, but it's also very like alien at the same time they're visiting this strange world and then they're going to go on to someplace else. So it's cool to visit it. I don't know. So that's, that's, those are locations. Um, but a lot of times the locations that we see are always like matched with some powerful music. Is there any particular musical moment that sticks out to you? 
whether it's a theme, it, it doesn't even have to be like a, you know, a, a particular shot, but just like this melody or this song was really, you know, sticks with me. Mm, which one would you, you can go first for this one. I've been going first. Uh, well, you already talked about one. It's it's Moria. Yeah, specifically like that's crossing hard. the bridge. That's, that's why I was letting you go first. Chanting. Yeah, the chanting was so good. I, the chanting is so good. Um, but but by far it is the, I don't know how else to put it. It's like the introducing the fellowship. It's like when they're out oh, they're walking that. for the first time. Yeah, and then they like crest the hill, and it's Gandalf first, and it's ba 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 ba, and then they all walk by the camera. It really is like the, they, they play the fellowship theme. And I remember in the behind the scenes things, like Howard Shore was like, it seems kind of cheesy, but it works for this movie. Yeah. You know, like yeah. doing like playing the theme and showing the fellowship. <laughs> so that's mine. I'm trying to, about you? I'm trying, I mean, I, I think the minds of Moria, it's a car. Cause I feel like, I feel like I'm going back to that scene a lot. That's um, so cool. and that, that chanting is so good. I I can't remember how the the music goes, but I do really like the music during the fight at the end with the Urukai. There is some really good music with the whole, like the the battle with Aragon that I mentioned earlier. Like that whole scene. So I can't remember how the music goes right here, but like I know that adds so much more to it. I mean, the Shire yeah. music is good, but oh, yeah. I mean, you can't yeah. really can't really beat that. Um, you don't you don't like Mary and Pippin's song in the bar? Does that count? Oh, that 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 would count. Uh, yes, <laughs> I forgot about the, their song. Yes, actually, you know what? I have an answer now that I think that it's Gandalf singing when he arrives. I like his song a oh, lot. Well, yeah, he's singing "The Road Goes Ever On." He's singing mm. Bilbo's song. Yeah, I I, I like when his he arrives. that that I yeah. like that song. That's my favorite little moment of music, I guess, because yeah. you know. Aside from all the other Howard Shore, Howard Shore's amazing soundtrack, uh, uh, you Mm -hmm. know, from this from the film. But yeah, I would say Gandalf singing would be one of my favorite musical moments. And because all right, good stuff. So now a little bit. Well, I mean, since we're talking about kind of these can be a little silly, we can get a little serious. I got two more questions for you before we talk about our last, uh, our favorite moment of the movie. Okay. Uh, specifically, well, let's talk the, the the more serious one. Uh, your favorite weapon? Who's got your Who's got the the best weapon? You think in this in this movie? Which one did you like the most, or did you think was the most interesting or the coolest? Well, I, it, does it matter who's holding it? Does it matter? Does it have to be a hero? No. Right. Which weapon? It's, it's, um, it, the whip from the Belrog, then. Oh, obviously, oh, yeah. we never get to see it used, though. So I guess that's more of a shout out because I don't really get to see it. It's just, he just snaps it one time and he yes. kind of drags Gandalf down, but you don't really get to see that whip till later. So, like, I guess that's more of a like an honorable mention is the whip of the Belrog. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess beyond that, I'll have to say this: it's the gigantic bow and arrow from the Urukai. <laughs> that he uses oh, against yeah. Boromir. That thing is like that thing is yeah. like an, it kills. That can kill elephants, I think, or <laughs> elephants as they call it. And <laughs> <laughs> that that bow and arrow is scary. Like and like, of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, we didn't really. I thought it's we'd bring. I thought we'd bring up that Urukai, but he like when he uses that bow, that look he gives Bar- Boromir oh, when he's about to shoot him in the face. It's like it's almost yeah. a little uh, little. <laughs> He's really enjoying this moment. He's like, I stuck you with three arrows, and here is the last one. Yeah, he's but getting ready to give it to him. That, that's my answer. Is that bow and arrow that that Rukai? I don't know if he has a name. We'll call him. We'll call him Bill. I don't know. Like, I mean, Sting is cool, but my favorite is not a weapon anybody uses. Is um, it's Narsil, the shards of Narsil. Oh, okay. Because um, I love that scene, Boromir going and like looking at it picking it up and he, and he like saying to himself like sword that cut the ring and then he puts it down and he's like eh, it's just an old relic and it drops and i'm like how rude like go that's back why, and that's why that you up. think he's a dick like the rest of the movie is yes. that because of that scene and then aragorn picks it up and like kisses it and smooches and puts it back and like see you soon but yeah definitely narso i can't think of any other weapons that they have in this film because like, I mean, they, they all, they're all just like typical axes and 
and things like that. But yeah, no. Lego Legolas gets a, a bow upgrade though. He yeah. does get a bow from the lady. Um, what about um comic relief? Are there any moments that uh? There's a lot of that in this movie. I, I'm gonna uh, go mostly Hobbit derived. They're all but... they're all Merry and Pippin mostly, right? I mean, I guess some Sam in there, I guess too. But um, what? Oh, I've got something a little different. But okay. okay. Uh, what do you want me to go first for this one? Then mm-hmm. I'm again. I'm gonna go back to the Mines of Moria. What the hell? <laughs> I can't help it. I can't oh, help is it, it. Is it Pippin? Sure. Yeah, when he knocks the barrel down the wall. Uh... That, uh... Not, well, I don't know. Maybe it's comic relief, but it's it's, that's like, it's hilarious. I remember to watching me. that in the theater. You could hear a pin drop. Everybody in the theater was like, "Oh, oh my gosh!" I mean, I no, guess I, that's not comic relief, but it, it really the scene just because I've watched it so many times. It's just like it just keeps going. It doesn't stop. And like it just yeah. there's nothing that <laughs> ends. It's like if it was just once, you'd be like, "Oh, okay." But the fact that it, you know, that's what makes it funny is that it yeah. just keeps going. Yeah. It gets worse and worse and worse. <laughs> of course it wakes everybody up. I was saying we're talking about when he when he he touches a skeleton bone and like the skeleton falls down, brings the barrel mm-hmm. with him. Oh no, the, the chain with him. Chain. And then the barrel falls down <laughs> and then you mm-hmm. hear the drums. Um but yeah, oh, that's definitely so it's definitely up there. Uh, for me, for fa- for favorite comedic moment. I mean, I love Mary and Pippin's. Well, mostly Mary sniping at Pippin. Like he's like, you need people of intelligence and quality on this <laughs> mission, <laughs> quest, thing. Gandalf <laughs> like, qualifies G- you, Pippin. <laughs> Gandalf's expression when that in that scene is hilarious. He's like, oh, huh? like what? <laughs> <laughs> I love um, Elrond as they're running in. He's like, <laughs> like watching them like run in. <laughs> um, but no, mine is Gimli, man. Gimli's Gimli's got some good stuff. at everything. Uh, like when when Aragorn says, "Like I, I'll ask you to, you know, go ahead and and recover your strength, Master Dwarf." Like, <laughs> I just love John Reese Davies getting all puffed yeah. up, you know, and puffing and puffing. That's he does that so good. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I guess Gimli's got some good. Like he's like when he says like no one throws a dwarf. And, no one, th- yeah, not the beard. <laughs> oh, oh god, never trust an elf. All right, all right, Justin. Well, I think we're ready to cross the finish line here. I got one more uh, question for you that we didn't talk about. Oh, well, please, please. So, ask away. what which actor? Which I mean, I mean, I guess we kind of did the favorite character, but like you, you're deep into the books obviously more you know we have all we both read them but do you do you think like what is your favorite adaptation of a character like it's like based on the information given to the book like which i mean i i really like boromir i know he's my favorite character but do you think they just really handled is it gandalf that they handled the most like who is your favorite adaptation of those characters that's a good question um i think aragorn is actually my favorite adaptation because in the book, he's kind of like already like arrived. He's or like he's already wearing like the he's already like accepting the mantle of being the king. Mm-hmm. You know, he's just like, I need to find my throne. Like he's kind of I don't want to say arrogant, but he's bold. He's yeah, I, can't I, get like, that. I like this kind this of version. postmodern Aragorn that's like doesn't, you know, like understands like the frailty of humanity and doesn't want to fall to the same fate as Isildur and yeah and he stays I, I, like, I like that better. I like yeah. that interpretation better. Cuz he it, stays it stride I feel like he stays strider longer in the book. I feel like than in the movie like he, like at least it feels longer in the book until you, he reveals who he is. Yeah. Yes. I, I noticed that too we watched in the movie where like you know they've called him Aragon for so long and then like I didn't notice this before but like Sam calls him Strider right at the end. Mm-hmm. I'm like what what why he's a white strider like why i haven't heard that name in ages like what why i um, think like he likes being called strider and i think he's still like when sam calls him that he probably is like yes you know like um what's his name oh my gosh i'm blanking on this the star lord when oh. finally at the end of the first guardians movie when someone's sure. like star lord yes <laughs> someone's calling me by my nickname that's funny but, um i mean i would say 
interestingly enough, I guess like it's more I've come around on it. It's not really my favorite adaptation. Is Arwen? I I actually like Liv Taylor as Arwen. Like I I like just because she doesn't really have much of a role in the book whatsoever. And I actually like how they overall handled her character, like giving her kind of more of a purpose in this film than the book. Like she's not the one that comes in the in the book. They don't. She's just chilling in Rivendell. She doesn't really come out on the horse and do the spell. Like I love that whole sequence with Arwen and her trying to save. Uh, you know that whole chase scene with the horses and and like her delivering that chant. Like I, I honestly that thought that whole shot and like the delivery and the way it sounds like that the the spell that she gives or whatever it's called. Um, I actually really like how they handled Arwen in this film. I mean, whether later on, I don't I don't agree, but still, I I don't like Liv Liv, Liv Tyler. I think wasn't a horrible acting like uh, actress to pick. I don't know who else you would would be. I think she looks the role. Um, maybe she doesn't, her, her, the way she talks is weird, but like, I don't, it doesn't bother me. She's an elf. So, you know, it kind of fits. And I love, I love her like banter with Aragorn. And I think Mm -hmm. Aragorn would like someone like her more Mm -hmm. because she's out there in the wild and she's not just like this princess in a castle. Yeah. How she's introduced is like, she puts a sword to his throat. She's like, what's this? Yeah. Arranged caught off his guard yeah it's like yeah like that's a cool character you know somebody who can sneak up on strider yeah but it, got- it kind of shows why she's be like a more rebellious version of her versus in the book like i just like i just like him that's why like it's like he oh, and, and it, and it, yeah you're absolutely right yeah so it, like he's into that mm-hmm. <laughs> why, i'm sorry like why why he chooses a yeah. life with eric Warren, sure okay. as you were saying, and i interrupted you sorry it's okay it's all good it's all good so all right, what's uh what's the final final question here? Final question is what was your favorite moment from this movie? Overall, your favorite moment, moment that <sighs> sticks out with you the most, one that when you think the fellowship, yeah, that's my favorite spot. That's my favorite moment. I mean, I'm going to make it easy. It's it's a, it's 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 don't say anything of, about the mines. A mine. I mean, it was technically not in the mine. It was like the exit of the mine. <laughs> oh. The exit of the mind? Which part? I mean, it's it's we you shall not pass. Like that's my Andy favorite. Justin, moment. <laughs> <laughs> you took my Boromir. <laughs> you took my favorite book. <laughs> oh, it's true though. I mean, for real, because this movie is all about place setting and setting things up. There's there's very few like super memorable moments in this in this movie. Like like um, especially in later the next two. A lot of bigger set pieces, um, but yeah, you're right. Yes. How do you it's how do you not pick that? Yeah, it's just such a well done scene, and like you would say, just the lead up to it, that's like it's almost like the end of the movie in a way, and then there's another movie okay. after that, right? I mean, it's like there's like three movies in this film, you know, getting to Rivendell, Gandalf dying, okay. and then the aftermath of dealing with that. So yep. like. But that ending, and obviously there's a huge payoff to it in later films, but that that was just such a well-delivered scene. Uh, Ian McKellen does it beautifully. Uh, the Belrog, obviously, we love. Um, and then just how all those characters involved handle it happening. Like, I would say just looping in that, too, like... Him, out on the yeah, rocks. him dying, yeah. like, them, them grieving... <laughs> You know, even Frodo's how he handles it differently than the rest because he has the ring. Boromir mm-hmm. actually shows like a good side to him. Like let them let them mourn. Legolas yep. is just like you know I am going to lead on Aragon and do what he says. Gimli's handling with the loss of the mines, and he's more sad mm-hmm. about that. And of course, like well, and Gandalf Gandalf's just died. Yeah, yeah. Like all of this is all okay, happening. Right. It's like it is so well done and so well handled. And like, how do you? I, I don't. I don't know how else to. You know, I would just be kind of just playing the game if I picked a different moment, to be quite honest. Like, I mean, I'm just like, well, it's I'll true. just pick this one it's if true. I if I wanted something different. But um, but yeah, it's we could we could share the minds of like that moment. It's can, it's so good. We can share it. I and I and I, I love that. Obviously, the chase up until that point. And and if you've never seen the movie, because I went and saw the movie with people who never had read the book or seen you know didn't know anything about them i hadn't read the books yet when i watched really the movie too hit them hard and i mean 
I didn't want to give anything away. So I'm just like, like, yeah, I know it's crazy. It's crazy. And you know, when they arrive at Lothlorien and they're all just like, you could like palpably see just how defeated they are. And they're like, he's fallen into shadow. He's like, he's beyond our sight now. I like how they say that though, because they never say like Gandalf said, they're just like, he's fallen into shadow. And when I would see the next movie with those same people, how excited they were to see Gandalf alive, you know, and mm -hmm. flying down a, a, a hole with him and catching his sword along the way. Anyways, that's a different movie. We'll get there. <laughs> the only other one I would that comes close is Boromir's death, too. Both of them yeah. are supposed deaths. It's up there. It's it's up. It's up there. It's his redemption in the end that really makes yeah. it because you 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 don't like Boromir at first and you're wary of him and you're worried when he's with Frodo and then he does defend Merry and Pippin. He does earn back his honor and does get to like kind of die with dignity. I don't know. That that was a good turn for him and mm -hmm. it's kind of like the clarity of death is what lets him kind of see the error of his ways. So yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, I, I, I even like said that in earlier when I brought up Boromir that this would be kind of one of my favorite moments too. It's like hard oh. to, like those are the two, right? I mean, there's so many other ones like like they're kind of more like side moments and so so forth like that. But like, um, but yeah, those those two really speak the fellowship of the ring, and I think it's the two main key things. Like if you take anything out of the movie, those are the two main moments is the four though those two things. So, anyways. Oh wait, no, 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 no! My favorite part is the Lembus bread. That's it. <laughs> Never, mind. Never mind, because bread. like, Eric, like, um, what's his name? Legolas takes like the tiniest nibble. He's like, a small nibble mm, can yeah. sustain a man for a whole day. Yeah. So how many did you eat, Pippin? Four. And he gives this amazing belch. Oh, <clears throat> I do like Gimli's. Uh, just to kind of relate to Lothlorien, I do like Gimli's uh, response to Gladriel. Like it's so good. He's like, I would never be vexed by that woman. And mm -hmm. da, 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 like <laughs> sorceress, yes. <laughs> he wants like comedic moments, like that whole scene where he's like talking about not being vexed. He's like, like they'll never catch me. I have like the 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 eyes of a hawk and okay. the ears of a fox. And then like when, they, when the arrow, like his face is so good. <laughs> so oh good, man, yeah. it's so good. But uh, but yeah, no. We could have heard the door. We if... could have shot the dwarf in the dark. <laughs> He's my favorite elf in the movie, too, by the way. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about favorite elf, did I we? Know, whatever. Well, all right, well, this has been great. It makes me excited to watch Two Ooh. Towers again. I am. I am so excited to see Two Towers again. Oh, a lot of good stuff. New characters. A lot more of these moments, these epic moments, too. And a lot more visual effects to actually, that, that stand the test of time. Yes. Yeah, well, we'll get well, there soon. Well, as always, you can find us on our YouTube channel and all the other places. Look for that link tree link to see us and connect with us in whatever way you see fit. But uh, until next time, until we get to the two towers, um, I'll just sign off. This is Paul. <laughs> I'm Justin. Have a good one. <laughs>